Coming up on the Open Alliance Show, 2491 No Mythic out of Minnesota is back to give us their current progress as they go into the depths of the crescendo season. We'll be focusing on uh, their CAD, getting a full overview on where they're at right now, shooter prototype as well too, and the geometry that goes into all this as well. Also, they've been doing some really cool stuff with programming that we'll be talking about, uh, including uh, doing their different object detection that they have, talking about their smart dashboard, all that and more coming up here on the Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Coming up here on the Open Alliance Show, it's 2491. No Mythic from Minnesota back once again. It's been a couple weeks since we've seen them. Lots of great uh, developments to go through with this team. We'll be jumping into their CAD, talking about their shooter, uh, something with an inverted swerve, so we'll learn more about that uh, programming, and a couple of shout-outs as well. So we have uh, the four same students that were on last time coming back on again to talk more about their team and their progress. So students, if you mind, introduce yourselves. Let us know what you do on your team, and we'll hop right in. Cool. Hello there. Um, my name is Liam. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the team captain on 2491. Hello, everyone. My name is Rasmus. I use he, him pronouns. I'm the design captain on Nomadic. Hi, I'm Clover. I use they, them pronouns, and I am production captain on 2491. Hi, I'm Rowan. I'm the programming captain on 2491. I use he, him pronouns. So let's go right into, I know we're going to start out with CAD on your team here, so let's jump right into your current progress and walk me through what you've been working on. Over, yeah. So on our screen here uh, is our CAD for the robot this year. Um, and what's really cool is this is basically all student designed, um, with our mentors being a great resource, but mostly students building it or designing it. Um, so a few things to note here. We have a shooter design, which is right in the middle. That we have a great prototype right here, which we'll be talking about very shortly. But then, yeah, we have our climbers. Um, we have two climbers on each side. Uh, the intake that we showed last time. So this is the horizontal roller. Uh, so a game piece can just slide underneath the bumper, and then we can pick it up from either side. Um, and then going from there, we have our indexer, uh, which we're just using some poly belt. And that leads us to our shooter here. So this is a prototype that we're going to show. Um, so we did a few iterations of this. Um, but what was really cool that we learned was that um, we can uh, move each wheel individually, so we're moving the top and bottom sets of wheels. But in our testing, we realized that moving each side individually, so left side versus right side, actually provides a more consistent shot because we can do one side faster than the other, and that provides a nice spin on the note. It's interesting you say that because we uh, earlier had the Re team Rembrandts on as well, too, and the way that their design was was very similar with that as well. So it's cool that you've also uh, found that through testing, that that has worked best for your team, and you've gotten cool results out of it. Yeah, we've taken a lot of uh, inspiration from team Rembrandts. Uh, a lot of teams in Open Alliance have done a phenomenal job of documenting their journey, and it's been really cool. So. Very cool. Anything else from, from CAD-wise? Uh, you know, I, I think about last time we talked and you were just going through intake prototypes and, you know, very infancy stage of it. This seems to be pretty complete here uh, at this point. Uh, anything else that you wanted to highlight? Yeah. So one of the systems that we spent a lot of time iterating on was our indexer. So our shooter is actually kind of interesting because it's sort of an angled version up. So our indexer, uh, we call it a bent shooter design. So it goes up from our indexer or from our intake here into our indexer, um, which then we use a few poly belt or some poly belt on some rollers, which then feeds it really nicely into the shooter. Um, so we spend a bunch of time figuring out that geometry um, and it seems to work pretty nicely. And can even uh, rotate back to hit the amp, which we haven't quite tested, but hope to test it. <laughs> So I, I know that, you know, CAD, I know we'll be talking about shooter in just a little bit as well, too, but um, where are we going from, where you have from CAD into manufacturing, like what's kind of the next step to get to that point to start to have full assemblies being assembled? Um, so that goes with part of, um, we send out part of our um, stuff, like right when we finish CAD, we send things out to Quality Tool, which is one of our um, sponsors that manufactures quite a few of our parts. But then we have another half that we manufacture ourselves. 
and we have a long list of sticky notes with our parts <laughs> on it. And um, we have the days we want to get them done. And then um, we try to get them done that day. And then they go to our done list. Um, but it's, um, it's a lot of uh, trying to keep up with wanting to get what done, but then not having... Um, just having one of each machine to be able to <laughs> manufacture things. Man, I wish we um, had a second X card. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> we also have a Trello. It's not just sticky notes. Yeah, we do have a Trello, um, but it is very nice even for me visually to see it. And it's been helping um, actually keeping everyone in the loop on uh, where we are um, at the time. I mean, I'm super old boomer. I don't mind having the big sticky notes on things as well, too. So that, that's all good. I have used Trello, though, as well, too. So very cool. So you, you talked about that big shooter behind you. I think we got to bring that on and talk more about uh, anything else on that that you want to cover. But is that something we can get a little bit closer look on? Sure. Yes, yes please. Do you want to? Three, two, one. Wee. Okay. Here, let me get out of the way. Yeah. Go okay. for it. All right. oh. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. So this is sort of our, our finalized prototype. Um, so with this, so as I talked about before, each side of the, the shooter uh, rotates individually, um, which has been really nice. Um, and then from a side profile, you can see we have our whole sort of side here. Um, our indexer isn't fully in this prototype, um, but that we're just using some poly belt and some rollers. Um, yeah, yeah, should be pretty cool. And what kind of testing have you done so far with this? Yeah, so a bulk of the testing that we've done is with the shooter. Um, so that's looking at different different uh, distances away, different angles, um, and then also different wheels. And we found that these um, these wheels seem to work pretty nicely. Um, and they're Fairlane-esque sort of. Um, we tried with some compliant wheels and some Colson wheels, but these seem to work nicely. <laughs> Very cool, Matt. Um, anything else from from your shooter wise that you're looking at implementing or doing at all? Um, is it, I guess I asked, is it going to be a, like a fixed shooter? I think in the cat it looked like there was some geometry where you could angle it. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so this shooter will be able to rotate a total of 90 degrees. Um, so that's starting at 10 degrees to get a shot, uh, ideally right outside the opponent wing. Uh, and then we can go right up next to the subwoofer and even over that to get to our amp. So. If we look in our, yeah, if we look on our, our screen really quickly I'm not here. the best with cat. I'm trying to use cat, and it's not working very well. <laughs> yeah, so if you look on our screen right here, um, you can see that we have two positions. So we have our, or the, we have multiple positions, a ton of positions between here. Um, but our sort of limits are down at 10 degrees, and then up over at 100 degrees, where we'll hopefully be able to shoot into the amp. Um, specifically there, I'd like to highlight uh, what we like to call our big gear, or um, our curved rack and pinion is technically what it's called. Um, and this is just a little little gear running up. Wait, wait, wait. Is the gear not in this? OK. It looks like it's, oh, oh I can't. They changed the color on me, um, <laughs> which is actually a good thing. Um, we just run this little gear up and down using a regular Neo, um, and that's how we angle our shot. Before we get into your drive, I got to ask you, one of the things I really love about your team every year is the aesthetics that you bring uh, over it. And your robot is definitely one of those as well, too. I saw a picture on your uh, OA thread earlier that you had uh, what looked like some anodized uh, framing as well, too. Are you planning on doing that again this year? Yes. Um, we are always wanting to do that. That's a really big thing for us. Um, we already have sent a few pieces out um, to get those anodized, and we have more definitely to get anodized. Um, what you saw in CAD is going to be um, the colors um, that we want. Yeah, and on screen right here, uh, we have some pictures of some of our drivetrain tubes. Uh, that'll be nice and purple and black. That looks awesome. So, like, that's so cool. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about uh, one of the things when we talked about uh, earlier in the show that you are doing something called an inverted square? Can we talk a little bit more about what that what that is? Why did you choose that route? That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, Rasmus, um, I say. Yeah, Rasmus, go for it. Yeah. So one of the big things this year is that we wanted to make uh, the game pieces able to slide underneath our robot, and so to be able to do that uh, with a small frame, which is something that we decided as a requirement very early on in the season. So to do that, we decided that we needed to move the uh, swerve motors to be inverted. So as you can see in this image on screen, our motors are on top of the swerve. So this is the mark for inverted swerve modules from Swerve Drive Specialties. Um, but we inverted the motors um, 
bring our whole drivetrain up. And so the bottom plates as well are moved up. So our whole drivetrain or, or our whole belly pan is actually four inches off of the ground, um, which will let game pieces have a, a nice uh, spot to move underneath them, given the fact that our bumpers will come down past that to stay within rules. We like to call these modules Mark IV IIs or Mark IV I squareds. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense on that. Um, and then from, you mentioned from the way that your drive is, um, with the way that your intake is going to be as well, like have you done testing with that to make sure you are going to be able to acquire game pieces the way you want to, that sort of thing? Um, I don't think we have the prototype here today, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yes, we, we have a really solid prototype that allows us to do intake from both sides. It's just a simple two inch. Actually, could you bring up the CAD for that? Um, yes. It's just a simple two inch wheels, a uh, little bit off of the ground. And you're, and as you can see on screen, that's all it is. It should be able to pick up both directions and it's worked really well for us. Um, and we're hoping it'll work really well on the robot. Yeah. And on our Open Alliance thread, uh, we have videos of our prototype working as yeah. well as the CAD. Um, so feel free to take a look at the CAD, look at the uh, dimensions. So. Yeah. Let's transition a little bit and talk about your programming side of things and where you've gone so far. Uh, one of the things when we talked pre-show is you're looking at doing some uh, object detection with the game pieces. Uh, so talk to me more about that. And uh, I think you mentioned you're using Path Planner. Um, so I'd love to hear more about that with your smart dashboard too. Yeah, absolutely. So programming has done a lot since our last interview. We've finished all the code for our subsystems. We've coded all the autos that we want for Duluth. We've finished all our math to aim at the uh, speaker automatically. And this Saturday, programming is going to be getting the practice bot. So it'll be kind of we're going to be entering cr crunch time to try to get all the uh, blanks filled in that we couldn't do without a robot. Um, and one thing to note about using Path Planner, I know a lot of teams use that, but they recently made a change to their coordinate system that uh, is completely different than last year. And it has messed with our odometry, our driving during teleop, our following paths during teleop. Um, and so all of those things, we had to make like some last minute changes to it in the last week once we found out about this change. And um, yeah, that's it for programming. No, wait, there's, uh, there's a video I actually want to show oh, here. And there's some videos for programming as well. <laughs> um, so, um, so if we take a look on screen, you can see uh, something that programming has been working really hard on, which is moving and shooting at the same time. This guy doesn't give himself enough credit, or the programming team enough credit. So as you can see, there's the robot on the screen right there. And as we move it around, it points towards the speaker. And then as we pan over, you will see that we don't have a speaker up, unfortunately. But we do have a robot actively targeting it. Um, and so this actively shoots and moves. Hopefully, at the same time, we don't have a shooter to test it with yet. Um, and yeah. it actively adjusts based on its current speed and its current shooting speed. And are you looking at uh, shooting at like a full speed, or do you estimate that you may have to slow down a little bit in order to do that? I mean, still shooting in the move at any speed, I think, is very impressive. But what's kind of your goal for your team? Um, so our goal is to shoot at full speed. Um, obviously, nothing's been tested yet because we don't have a robot built yet. But um, that's our goal. Very, very um, cool. Then, yeah, what's the other video we have here? One other video here is, oops, I paused it. There we go. Um, is of our automatic detection for a game pieces system. So take Rowan, take it away. So what our robot's doing right now is it has a camera on the front of the robot that um, that path or like it drives itself to pick up the next note that is the closest note that it sees. So what it's doing here is it's seeing the note in front of it, and then it's going to it. It's driving towards it until it gets out of its vision, and once it's out of its vision, it can then see the next note in front of it. So it's basically following a line of notes, which is pretty cool. I have to admit, the first thing that pops in my head after seeing that is those poor notes. Like, I like <laughs> do, you, do you see that you're potentially tearing those up at all or anything? Yes. We have actually yeah. tried to, like, look at, like, how we can, like, not do that. Um, but it's kind of hard not to. We definitely had to, yeah. like, test our, like, pressure in, in our shooter even yeah. to not tear it up as much. But... Well, I mean, I guess One good news because the day of recording this, Annie Mark is going to have new notes coming out. So I guess you can at least get a few more uh, for yourself. <laughs> so go. that's great. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. No, 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 no worries. Um, one thing we have noticed is um, as we've tested our prototype shooter, we look on the carpet after we're done and we just see like so many like little bits of orange on the carpet from particles that have sh shaved off. Um, so, yeah. And one thing with that that we've been or that we've designed for is for our intake. Uh, we designed some wheel guards for our wheels. Yeah. So if we take a look at the screen here, 
uh, we can see that we have these little guards over the wheels. So these help align the game pieces as they enter the robot yeah. and help it so that we don't actually drive over them. Which you were seeing on the video, we hadn't actually installed those yet. Now that we have installed them, they funnel really nicely. All right, and are, are those 3D printed or what's the material for that? Yes, these are... Yeah, okay. these are 3D printed. Um, and we were very skeptical of them at first, <laughs> but um, they're actually really great. They help a lot. Me too. Uh, that's really cool. All this progress has been great so far. Um, I want to wrap up here. Uh, you mentioned you have a special shout out in regards to, uh, I don't know what an ACPA field is, but give me a little bit more on, on what that is and uh, what you want to talk about for it. Yeah. Um, so specifically, I wanted to shout out the HCPA field. Um, this is a field that has recently come into, uh, it is a new resource that our local Minnesota teams have been able to access. Um, there's also a MURA field, which um, those are just the acronyms for the schools that they belong to. Um, but we finally, Minnesota has two full fields that are access that are accessible to any teams in, lo in local Twin Cities. Um, specifically, we have a mentor, Mark, uh, who is super helpful in building those. And anyone who has built those, super huge thanks. It allows us to use April tags and autos and game piece detection in a very realistic setting. So we wanted to just give them a huge shout out. No, that's awesome. And it's cool that there's two of those options out there as well, too. So uh, Duluth is, uh, if I remember correctly, is usually week one. I'm guessing it's week one this year as well, too. Uh, so not much time coming up before you have that. So uh, Nomethic, thank you so much for coming on, giving us all your awesome updates and progress. Make sure you check out their OA blog on Chief Delphi. And we can't wait to see how you do in Duluth week one. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you. Goodbye. Bye. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineered their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.